slope, point slope, and slope intercept. First, we're going to take a look at slope. Slope refers to the steepness of a line. It is defined as the rise, how much a line rises between two points over the run. So we can count the rise. There are one, two, three, three, and we can count the run. The run is count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five. The run is five. Now it turns out we can get this information from the points without drawing a line. You see, all the way up from here to here is four. And this little bit that is not in the triangle happens to sit right here at the 1. So I can take 4 minus 1, and that will get me the 3. For the run, from the y-axis clear over to the corner where the right angle is in the triangle, is a distance of 7, and that sits right there minus this little bit that isn't in the triangle happens to sit right here. It's the 2. 7 minus 2 gives us the 5. So notice what I did. The 4 was a y. This was a y. And the 1 was a y. So I subtracted the two y's. And below, the 7 was an x. And the 2 was an x. So I subtracted the two x's. What they wanted to do then was turn this into a formula and write it in such a way that it was easy to understand. So they needed some variables to describe their formula. So they called this one x2 comma y2 and this one x1 comma y1. The x2 y2 and x1 y1, the way that is written, the notation is called subscript. What subscript does, when I say x1, comma, x2, comma, x3, and I could keep going forever, that gives me the ability to have an infinite number of variables with one letter. So x1, comma, x2, comma, x3 are just different variables, like a, b, and c would be different variables. The advantage of this kind of notation is that since I'm talking about an ordered pair, which is an x and a y, Saying x1, comma, y1 just tells me that those are x variables. They're just different x variables. And same thing with y1 and y2. Now look at the point 7, 4. Instead of 4, what we'll do is we'll use that y2, y2. And instead of 1, we'll use that variable y1. Down below for the run, instead of 7, we'll use that variable x2. And instead of 2, we'll use that variable x1. And then we write the formula as m. We call m the slope. Someone started calling it m, and it's stuck. I guess s is a bad, bad variable. So to find the slope, what I do is to find the rise, I subtract the y's, and to find the run, I subtract the x's. Rise is up and down, and that's what the y-axis signifies. Run is left and right, and that's what the x-axis is. So this is the rise, y always goes on top over the run. And the common errors in, in this formula are when students put the x up top. Keep in mind, it's rise over run. That's what slope is defined as. Y must go up top, otherwise it's wrong. The other mistake students sometimes make is they see the y2 and the x2, and they think that means second point. y2 and x2 is not the second point. It's just a different point than x1, comma, y1. The order 
you choose the points in doesn't matter. I can start with X1 or I can start with X2. But what is important is that you start with the same point above and below. I'll explain. Here are two points. I'm going to use my formula. I'm going to subtract the y's up top and the x's below. I can start with either point. I will prove it to you. I can start with this point, and then I would start with this y and say 2 minus. Notice the subtraction is separate from the sign on the number. It's 2 minus negative 8 over negative 6. I'm subtracting the x's below minus 4. 2 minus 8, negative 8 is a double negative, that's 2 plus 8, which is 10. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, and that simplifies to negative 1. Note that if I do it in a different order, let's start with 4, negative 8. So I'm going to start with the y, negative 8 minus the other y, 2. If I start with the negative 8, I must start with the 4 below. That's the rule. You have to start with the same point above and below. Which one you start with doesn't matter. 4 minus negative 6. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. 4 minus negative 6 is a double negative. That ends up being 4 plus 6, which is 10. And notice that negative 10 divided by 10 is negative 1. They are the same. As long as you start with the same point above and below, you'll be fine. One last example. Let's say I ask you to find the slope of 8, negative 3, and negative 2, 4. We're going to find the slope. I'm going to subtract the y's up top. Negative 3 minus 4. I'd started with a negative 3. You could have started with a 4, though. But since I started with a negative 3, I must start with the 8 below. 8 minus negative 2. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. 8 minus negative 2 is going to be 8 plus 2, which is 10. This fraction does not simplify or reduce. That is the answer. Remember, your fractions must have no common factors above and below. If they're both divisible by 2, divide them both by 2. If they're both divisible by 3, divide them both by 3. A few things to observe here. Start with the black line. Notice that if I make a triangle and I go between these two points, all I need to find the slope are two points on the line. If I count the rise, going up is positive and going right is positive. What I want you to realize is that when a line goes up and to the right, the slope is positive. Up to right makes a positive slope. The line in the red, note that if I pick any two points and make a triangle, and I'm going to overlap here, going down is negative, and going right is positive. So if a line goes down to the right, is negative. So take a look at the lines. If the line goes up and to the right, it's positive. If it goes down and to the right, it's negative. Let's take a look at the blue line. The blue line is a horizontal line, and all we need to find the slope on any line is two points. So we'll count the run between those two points. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it doesn't rise at all. The rise is 0. So if I look at the rise over the run, it is 0 over 
5, which is 0. A horizontal line has slope 0. I always tell my kids that it's like the floor. Look at the way the word floor is spelled. It has those O's in it. Think of those O's as zeros. The slope of the floor is zero. Take a look at the yellow line. Again, all we need are two points to find the slope. Any two points will work. I picked randomly picked two, and I can count between them. It's three. So I know that the rise over the run is 3 over 0. It doesn't go left or right at all. And this, we don't know what it is. The calculator says error. In mathematics, we call this undefined. So in fact, a vertical line uh, has undefined slope. If a line goes up and to the right, it's positive slope. If it goes down and to the right, it's negative slope. If it's flat like the floor, if it's horizontal, it has zero slope. And a vertical line, like the wall, slope is a measure of steepness. A, a vertical line is not steep anymore. It has undefined slope. Now, last thing to point out, students get messed up here. Horizontal, zero is a slope. Zero is a number. Undefined is not a number. So when you hear someone say a line has no slope, don't think that means zero. Zero is a slope. No slope would be a vertical line. Point slope is a formula. And where the formula came from, someone took the slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. They put the m over 1, and they cross-multiplied. Remember the way cross-multiplying works? 1 times y2 minus y1 is y2 minus y1. The other direction, m times x2 minus x1 is m times x2 minus x1. This is essentially point slope. However, those are two points, x2, y2, x1, y1. What I need is a normal variable, a normal x and y that changes continuously as I plug in points and draw a line or make a table. So they could choose either y2, x2, or y1, x1, and call them just a normal x, y. Choose one of those points. The one they chose was y2 and x2. And we're going to call y2 just plain old y and x2 just plain old x. And any point can be plugged in for those. And those points will be solutions to the equation. How do you use point slope then? You need a point and a slope, hence the name. If you're given a point like 6, negative 4, and a slope, like m is 1 half, then I can take and go y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus, every ordered pair is an x and a y, y minus negative 4, notice the double negative, that's going to make a positive, equals 1 half times x minus the x of the point, which is 6. Typically, what you're asked to do is put the equation in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equal mx plus b. Get y by itself. In this equation, then, the first thing we would do is distribute the 1 half. y plus 4 equals 1 half times x, 1 half x. Take the 1 half to both. And 1 half times 6 is 6 divided by 2 minus 3. The last thing we do then to get y by itself 
is subtract 4 from both sides, minus 4, and y will be 1 half x minus 7. We just talked about slope intercept, y equal mx plus b. Just a reminder that when you solve for y, the slope, which is the rise over the run, sits in front of the x, and b is the y-intercept. If I give you an equation like y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5, Every time you move from a point to a point, you will go down 2, that's the rise. Rise negative 2 is down 2. And you'll run 3. Think of the y-axis, that's up and down. And the x-axis, the run, left and right. When a line crosses the y-axis, the coordinates on the y-axis are always zero comma something. Because when you're on the y-axis, you don't go left or right at all. X is always zero. Note that if you take and plug zero in this equation, negative two-thirds times zero plus five, you end up with y equal five. Every time you plug in zero, in y equal mx plus b, it's y equal 0x plus b, and you just get y equal b. So the y-intercept is always 0 comma b, and it's always just sitting right there in slope-intercept. From there, to get to the next point, you rise and you run. Let's look at an example. If I ask you to graph the line y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 2, I know that this is the y-intercept. It crosses at negative 2. And the rise over the run is negative 3 over 4. So to rise negative 3, I go down. 1, 2, 3, right there. And I'll run positive 4. Positive would be to the right. Think of the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 3 over 4. Notice that negative 3 over 4 is exactly the same fraction as positive 3 over negative 4. This is a division problem. And when you divide and have one negative, your answer is negative. But if you use this, you're going the other direction. So from here, I'll rise positive 3. That's going up 1, 2, 3, right there. And run negative 4, negative 4 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice that this slope creates points on the same line. This is a really quick method to graph. That's one of the reasons we like slope-intercept. It gives you a lot of information and makes it very easy to graph. The remainder of this video is questions from your assignment. Question one, find the slope of the line. The first thing you need to find the slope is two points at an intersection. Here's one at zero five, and looking along the line, here's another at negative four comma zero. From there, I'll count the rise and the run. I'm going up. I'm going to make a little triangle. And I'm going to count the rise, count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a rise of five over a run of one, two, three, four. So it's up positive five, right positive four. The slope is five fourths. Question three. Pick a point that's clearly on the line, at a grid line. Here it works. I make it the triangle and count the slope. So I, I'm from, if I start here at this spot, call it 1, I'm going to go down 2, that's negative 2. 
and write one, two, three, that's positive three. Rise over run is negative two over positive three. Notice something. If I started down below, I'll call this point two, and I made a triangle. If I went up from there, that would be positive two, that's the rise. And then from here, I would go left, that would be negative three, and you still get 2 over negative 3, which is the same thing as negative 2 thirds. Question 5. Tick, pick two points that are obviously on the line at intersections and count the rise and the run. So up 1, 2, 3, and right 1. Rise of a run, 3 over 1. That's Both are positive. This next one. There's a point on the line, and there's a point on the line. Make a triangle. So if I start here at that point, going down is negative. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. Going right is positive. That's positive 1. So rise of a run is negative 4 over 1, or negative 4. This is like the floor. Remember those O's. Think of zero. The rise is zero, and zero divided by anything is zero. This is a slope of zero. Vertical line is undefined slope. That is, and in WAMAP, um, shorthand is DNE for does not exist. Undefined is the mathematical way we'd say it, though. DNE does not exist. Find the slope of the line. We know to find the slope. We subtract the y's up top. That gives us the rise. And below, we subtract the x's. That gives us the run. Negative 15 minus negative 13. Notice the double negative. The subtraction is separate from the sign on the number over 15 minus 9. So negative 15 minus negative 13 is negative 15 plus 13, which is negative 2. 15 minus 9 is 6, and that reduces to negative 1 third. Both are divisible by 2. Divide them both by 2 to get negative 1 third. Question 11. This is standard form. Standard form is when the variables are on one side and the numbers on the other. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are numbers. But the variables are on one side, the numbers on the other. What we're going to do is put it in slope intercept form. We're going to create Y equals MX plus B. We're going to get Y by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is move the 4X over. To do that, we add 4X to both sides. So I'll take my equation. Negative 4x plus 9y equals negative 45, and I'll add 4x to both sides. Reminder, you cannot add these. They are not like terms. So what am I left with? 9y equals, put the x in front, it's going to be mx plus b, 4x minus 45. Last step is to divide by 9, get the y by itself, and y will equal 4 ninths x minus 5. Question 12 is written in point slope form. To put that in slope intercept form, we just distribute the negative 4. y plus 8 equals negative 4x minus 12. Last thing we have to do to get y by itself is take off an 8 from both sides. And y will equal negative 4x minus 20. Question 13, put it in slope intercept form. This is just like the previous one on the previous page. Then give the slope and the y-intercept below as integers or improper fractions. First thing we're going to do to get y by itself is add 3x to both sides. Negative 3y is equal to, put the x in front, 3x plus 20. Divide both sides by negative 3, and y will equal negative 1x plus 20 over negative 3. 
Typically, we move that negative up top in this fraction. That's usually the way it's written. So the slope is negative 1, and the y-intercept is negative 20 thirds. Note that here I divided both of them by negative 3. You could have just put a negative 3 under both of them if you wanted. Question 17 is super fast. They give you the m. m is 3, and they give you the y-intercept. This thing crosses the y-axis at 5. In other words, b is 5. So we know that y equals mx plus b in slope-intercept form, where that's the slope and that's the intercept. So our equation is just y equals 3x plus 5. Question 19, point-slope form. We're going to make that equation. To use point-slope, we need a point and a slope. We have two points. Either one would work. You can just pick one of them. But we don't have the slope. So we have to go back to that formula where I find the slope by subtracting the y's to find the rise, subtracting the x's to find the run. Pick a point to start with. You can start with either one, but start with that point above and below. So 7 minus negative 7 over, starting with the same point, negative 5 minus negative 10. Notice the double negatives. This is 14 because it's plus, and this is 5, negative 5 plus 10, which is positive 5. Our equation, I'm going to use negative 5, 7, is y minus 7 equals 14 fifths times x minus negative 5. You could use the other point, in which case it would be y minus negative 7 equals 14 fifths times x minus negative 10. Either one works. They both create the same equation if you solve for y. So I'm going to use the one in blue. I'm going to solve for y. Put it in slope intercept form. y equal mx plus b. y minus 7 equals 14 fifths times x plus 5 is my equation because of the double negative. I'm going to distribute. This is going to be messy. y minus 7 equals 14 fifths x plus 14 fifths times 5. I guess it's not too bad because the 5s will cancel. 14 fifths times 5 is 14 times 5 divided by 5, because that 5 is over 1. The 5s cancel, and I'm left with 14. I'll add 7 to both sides to get y by itself. And my final answer is y equals 14 fifths x plus 21. Question 22 is a different version of the same question. First thing we need to do is find the slope. So I'll subtract the y's up top, negative 3 minus 9. Since I started with the negative 3, I must start with the 5. 5 minus 2. This is negative 12 over 3, which ends up being negative 4. Point slope using this point will be y minus the y, negative 3. y minus negative 3 is y plus 3, which equals the slope, negative 4, times x minus the x of that point, which is 5. Point slope form using 2, 9 would be y minus the y, 9, equals negative 4 times x minus 2. Pick one of those equations and solve for y. They'll both give you the same answer. I'm going to use the bottom one. y minus 9 equals negative 4x plus 8. We'll add 9 to both sides. And our answer then is y equals negative 4x plus 17. Question 25 wants you to find the equation that is parallel to the given equation that passes through the point 
negative 18, negative 3. If it's going to be parallel, that means it has the same slope. So what I need to do is find the slope of this equation. To do that, I'll subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to get y by itself. That's negative 6y equals negative 2x plus 4. I'll divide everything by negative 6. And this will simplify. Two negatives make a positive, And 2 over 6 is 1 third x minus, because 4 divided by negative 6 is negative. And they both divide by 2, so it's 2 thirds. This is what we needed. We know a parallel slope would have a slope of 1 third. I know the slope's one third. I know it passes through this point. I can use point slope, y minus negative three, y plus three equals one third times x minus negative 18, which is x plus 18. And now I can distribute y plus three equals one third x plus six. One third times 18 is 18 divided by three. Subtract three from each side and y will equal one-third x plus three. This question is really quick, but you need to realize some things. If you look at every point on this horizontal line, every single y value is the same. This point is negative four, four, this point is negative 3, 4, and this point is 2, 4, and over here is 5, 4. Note that every single y value is 4. Also realize that this is like the floor. The slope of the floor is 0. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. That means if I'm thinking of y equal mx plus b, it's y equals 0x plus b. And b is the y-intercept, which is 4. In other words, this is just y equal 4. Look at the ordered pairs. Every single y value is 4. Apply that to this other graph. Every point on this line everywhere has an x of negative 1, negative 1, 4, negative 1, 3, down here, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 3. This has undefined slope. M is undefined. So there's no way to make y equal mx plus b because there is no m. However, there is an equation. The equation is similar to the other one, but it's x equals. x is always the same. x equals negative 1. Just to point out, it's really x plus 0y equals negative 1. It's just that every y value I plug in just goes away because it gets multiplied by 0, and x always ends up being negative 1. Where is y always negative 2? That would be a horizontal line passing through negative 2. Every single point you draw on this line, y will always be negative 2, always down 2 from the x-axis. Where is x negative 3? That is a vertical line passing through negative 3 on the x-axis. And look at every point on this line. It's always three away every single time from the y-axis. Every single point has an x of negative three on that vertical line. These graphing ones are very fast. y equal mx plus b. My b is three, it's gonna pass through three on the y-axis. My slope is negative seven over one. This is the rise and this is the run. I'm going to go down 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and over 1. Notice that the line goes down and to the right.
y equals 7 eighths x minus 5. My intercept, my mx plus b is, my b is negative 5. And the slope is 7 over 8. And my rise is positive 7. That's up. And my run is 8. That's positive 8. That would be to the right. So count up 7 and over 8. This last one is in standard form. Standard form is when the variables are on one side and the number is on the other. In standard form, a great way to graph it is intercepts. You put in 0 for x, find the y, and you have one point. Put in 0 for y and find the x, and you have another point. All it takes is two points to make a line. But for practice here, I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. 4y equals 2x minus 4, and I'll divide by 4. And y will equal 1 half x minus 1. So the intercept is negative 1. The slope is positive 1 half. That's up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Draw your line, and you got it.